Hey guys, it's Mike here from RC Max, and it's time to stop teasing and start showing. So we've we've teased the um, the big pipe. Now you've all seen, well, hopefully you've all seen this on our social media channels. We've been teasing uh, some pictures. We've been teasing some, before that we were teasing that something new is coming. Well, it's time to stop messing around. So hopefully you've seen this pipe properly. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit closer on the camera. It, this is a big, big pipe. This is by far the biggest pipe ever made for an RC car. Um, so this is uh, what we've been leading with you with. It's been quite interesting to see the, the guesses that you've been going with. Interestingly, a couple of, well, quite a lot of people have been guessing wrongly, but for a project that's coming late this year. So if 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 what <laughs> if what this is is not what you were hoping for, you might actually not be as disappointed this year. So anyway, um, yeah. So it, it's uh, we've this project was all about trying to learn from experience, not only ours but other other uh, big bore engine brands, and um, you know trying to speak to as many people as possible without giving them a clue of what we were doing bring all that information together um, and try and put it into a new design that wasn't held back by you know other limitations on, on current on the current engines so the goal was to create obviously a hugely powerful engine you guys are already going to work out what we're, what's coming but create something with big big power um, and obviously a wide power band you know the more and more I spend with time driving my cars but also speaking to you guys about your, your, your own vehicles it's the width of power band that really really matters that's the bit that gives you that instant beautiful shoot out of the hole wheelie um, as well as the sort of the rpm and the top speed that you want from your car you know it, it's great to have a super super powerful engine but that only makes power for a really wide power band when it's screaming because then you have that disappointing slow pull out of the hole which um, you know nobody wants it's not that impressive really it's the it's that initial launch um, combined with the speed so width of power doesn't get hot stays cool that's really important obviously um, easy to start uh, everybody you know as you get bigger and bigger engines you've got bigger and bigger piston longer and longer stroke a lot of people have had problems with starting especially when they haven't got experience so it needs to be easy to start um, we need to have a powerful clutch obviously, uh, and easy to maintain so that when you guys have got your engine later down the line, when you want to service it, um, look after it, it's not difficult. It's not hard to get hold of the pieces um, and that sort of thing. And the most important thing of any engine, doesn't matter if it's RC or not, is reliability. So it's trying to trying to make sure it's reliable. Um, so that's the goals that we went with. I feel we've ticked every single box, but I mean, you know, I've learned my lessons with this hobby. Uh, everyone has different opinions. All I want to try and do is make sure that I'm happy with what I'm doing and, and hopefully it, it uh, impresses you guys. So let's stop um, talking because that's boring and bring the beast in. So yes, it was a big single. Um, no twin yet, guys, but um, yeah, wait and see. On that one so it's a big twingle uh, big single twingle <laughs> big single it is an absolute monster of an engine hopefully this is coming across on camera like it looks to me here but it this is a proper proper big big motor um, and it's it's got some weight to it but at the same time I, I haven't actually got any scales here now but um, when we get it on the scales later and we do some more pictures and stuff you think you might be impressed with the weight of it it isn't actually that heavy considering the features it's got many of which you you were already looking at before I haven't even got a chance to explain them to you so I'm going to start with the crankcases everything is completely redesigned you know so it, it's a, it is a fresh start which has been really really nice just to say screw you know old CAD files let's just start with a brand new CAD file and not be held back so that's that's been really good fun all new uh, intake track. The, we're still using our RC Max uh, V-Force 3 reed valve uh, but new intake track which is slightly moved back to get a little bit um better position and angle for the, uh, the the induction. We've got uh, obviously new transfer ports to suit this new cylinder, which I'll come on to in a minute. Um, we've got, uh, an, as you can see, we've gone a bit bigger on the carburetor. This is a TKM 100cc carting carb, 26 millimeter uh, Venturi. Really, really enjoyed this carb. It's just been so easy to tune. Um, it just, I don't know, it, it, it makes the engine easy to start. It really is good. It hasn't got a choke. So, you know, that may be interesting to some of you guys, but if we set the pop off at the right uh, pressure, it, 
you just breathe on the starter and this thing fires up. So the carb has, has been a really, really positive choice. Um, and then the, I guess the other sort of thing on, on the case that you guys are noticing straight away is that we, why, why have we got vents in the pull start? And then why have we got um, vents in the, in the crankcase? If you look underneath there at the back, We've got air vents in the case. Why, why, why have we done that? So um, that is because this is a forced cooled engine. Um, we've got, which I'll, I'm going to pull it off in a second for you. We've got a Zenoa magneto stroke fan inside of this uh, crankcase, all nicely hidden, which pulls air through the um, the pull start and also through the the, the vents in in the crankcase. Those actually those slots that you see, they're actually changing to multiple much smaller holes just to to improve the filtering of uh, of the air obviously we've got an outer wear some um, coming for the pull start so so we've got air um being sucked in from both sides of the engine just like a, a, a the the you know the small sonoa rc engines that a lot of you are used to this air is then being forced through channels within machined within the billet crankcase up into this uh, pocket here below the cylinder at the back then forced up into the what was the water cooling jacket of this cylinder. Um, so it's forced up on the exhaust port side, the hot side of the engine, obviously, up into the exhaust, just the same direction of flow as uh, the cylinder was designed to, to be taking water, but we're using um, air. So that's coming up around the exhaust port, up around the top there, then it's being forced round to the back of the cylinder here. And then this um, cleverly designed cylinder head has uh, a machined hole up a port in the back of the, the underneath of the head that allows the air to escape on the intake, the cooler side of the engine. So we sort of got the heat away from the hot side. We're evening the temperature, bringing it round to the cooler side of the engine. And we're allowing it out through these um, holes here in the back of the head, which are nicely covered by this plate. And when you see that, oh, I don't know. When you see that, you will notice that it is an 88cc engine. So, and there is lots of reasons why we've gone for that size. Um, but um, yeah, so that that's the cooling design, which I wanted to touch on that because it's just so obvious when you start looking at it, and you'd be you'd be wondering what um, what that's all about. So that's some I'm, I hope you guys are going to find impressive. I was quite pleased with it when I come up with the idea and been brainstorming for ages to how to do it i know a lot of other there are some other big bores that have cooling but they're all external just basically having like a, 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 a an air cooling shield like the same as um sonoa uh do to, to to then force the air over an air cooled cylinder um obviously the the, the, the idea of being, using a water cooled cylinder is already out there so we, we took inspiration from that and tried to improve on it and so we've we've got the the big power that comes with some of these modern uh, water cooled cylinders, but we are actually keeping the internal temperatures down to make it so so much more reliable, easier to tune. You don't have all the, the latent heat within the crankcases that then can, can transfer to the carburetor and can transfer to the clutch and everything else. So that's been probably the single biggest advantage of the overall. Um, design by the way and i have forgot to put on this the name of this engine is the diablo so if you look on here you'll see and on the engine head plate it's the diablo 88 that is the name of the motor and if you're wondering what this big space is here the, the rc max skull and crossbones logo is going to be machined on that space there i just didn't bother for the prototype um for, for um uh, for this video so that's kind of something I'm really proud of. The other advantage that comes and, and sort of was tacked on to the project in terms of the, the cooling design was we've been able to, this is our Zenoa um, Easy Start that a lot of you guys have been giving great feedback on. It uses the GP460 GoPad internals, which are just bulletproof and awesome um, in our beautiful billet housing. So this is a start, a start that's already out there, established, tested, proven, but we can use it for... You know, easy starting on this 88cc motor so guys with you know shoulder problems or or older gentlemen that want to be able to enjoy a bigger engine have got the opportunity to you know two finger start an 88cc motor with no decomp valve no oily mats no no problems that come with a decomp so that's you know big plus um obviously ignition we're just using the genuine sonoa um rc coil reliable simple does the job just one coil unit you know, we'll put a we'll put a nice some heavy duty uh, HT lead up there to the to the plug and it's just job done. Anybody can get these from model shops all around the world. So 
from an ease of maintenance point of view, which was one of the big goals. It's uh, It just makes so much sense. So that's all good. That's the kind of cooling and the innovation side of it, I think, nailed. Cylinder. Now, there are so, so many choices out there for powerful water-cooled cylinders and it was almost spoiled for choice, really. And I've got quite a few prototype motors using different um, uh, op uh, sort of cylinder options. But we went with this uh, beauty in the end. It's made by Stage 6 and it is a super motard cylinder. So the advantage that I found using this um, setup is these cylinders, unlike scooters, which have a CVT transmission, hopefully you guys are aware of that. It's basically a belt a belt driven automatic transmission where you've got the two pulleys and they're constantly variable so it's not got a gearbox it's just always in the right gear those motors that are designed for those gear um, gearboxes which we touched on this when i was trying to uh to sort of improve on cylinders in the past is that they don't need to have a wide power band you can make quite a narrow power band but because the cbt always keeps the transmission sorry keeps the engine rpm in that power band because of its clever transmission, you, you can still get great speed without wide power. For a super motard bike, you need wide power because you've got a and you've got a five or six speed gearbox. Um, the second you sort of dump your clutch and start to pull away on a on a on a bike, you've got you know 150 kilos combined weight more. Obviously, if if you're a big guy. Um, to to pull around, you've then you got the every single gear change the RPM drops significantly, it's got to have the, the torque down low to be able to pull straight into that next gear and rev out in that um, gear to get to the next gear at you know, good acceleration. So the beauty of this cylinder, and Stage 6 did an absolutely fantastic job of it, um, is that it's just it's got so much wide power. It doesn't matter if you're down at sort of 6,000 RPM, it's got balls. If you, you're up at sort of 15, 16,000, it's still hanging on there because... It, that's what it was designed to do. So I'm I'm really pleased to be working with Stage Six again um, on this cylinder, and um, it's got a, a downward facing exhaust port, as you've noticed. So the uh, the pipe has a, a matching um, uh, configuration. So anybody that was thinking about wanting to buy this pipe for any existing engines, it won't work. It is specific to this platform. Um, I'm not sure how well this is going in the camera view here, but you can. You can see, so that this is a Baja and hybrid uh, fitment. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to get it in the low C or the MCD anywhere near release date, but it's something that we'll look at later. You know, we need to start somewhere, and the Baja and the hybrid is the, the platform that really takes the big power. So that's what this is all about. I just love this pipe. It's just beautiful. Um, with this pipe, actually, I'll just mention while I've got the chance, we took inspiration from a French company called Bidelot uh, with this pipe. Um, they are well known for making talky pipes and um, there's loads and loads of, of pipes out there for these modern two-stroke super motard bikes but the bit a lot exhaust was was really really impressive so we've we took a lot of inspiration from the uh, the length of the pipe and some of their cone angles we've modified um, their what they they do for their application significantly in the header section to suit RC and having a single gear um, obviously we need even more torque and wider power range so this 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 pipe is actually bigger than the biggest pipe you will find on um up to 100 cc supermoto <laughs> motard bike so it was a case of get the pipe design done make it fit the car it wasn't oh how, how big a pipe can we fit the car so it, it was a challenge to fit but the bonus is that we've got you know we've got the pipe for the first time ever in in big 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 bore rci you know sort of 71 plus we've actually got a pipe of the size that we should have instead of the size that can fit, which was, um, you know, w was a nice way to, to, to approach the exhaust subject. So, yeah, I think I've covered most of the subjects here. Obviously, this carburetor is external uh, pulse, but we've got a, if you look here in the manifold, we've just got a little uh, fitting machined into there. So it's going to be a nice short pipe from here to here to join up and provide the external pulse to get the carb pump working. Um, what I will just do to give you a better insight here is remove the, um, remove the starter and the fan cover. So just bear with me a moment here. Any of you guys that have tried this uh, pull start on your um, Zenora engine, please um, you know, feel free to 
jump in the RC Max owners group on Facebook and provide you know videos or feedback at all. It's something that I've wanted to do for ages and just put off and put off. So I was sort of pleased to finally get the job done because it's just such a simple unit. It's beautiful. It's got all the usual um, you know finishing techniques that we use at RC Max to make sure that we're ahead of the game. Um, but this, these, these so proven reliable GP460 internals. So it is a really, really nice piece. So that, again, you can see there's another flywheel in there. And these are the adapter pieces that we make to make our starter fit the uh, the flywheel. So we'll just pull this um, cover off now. Just three M5 bolts hold this cover on. And then, so it's just a lovely little lightweight cover there. Then we can see the business. So there's no flywheels, no coil, nice and simple, reliable, proven. We've to try and make sure that the airflow wasn't too rapid because the, these are no flans on, um, they, they flow a huge amount of air. To try and cut it down a little bit, we have choked the fans operation by keeping the Whereas if you look at a, 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 a Zenoa fan cover, it slowly snail shells out for quite a significant period of time. Right from here, it's sort of snail shelling out. We've kept it choked a little bit to cut the airflow down to where we wanted it. And obviously, which means less you know, drag, less horsepower loss, which is good. And then it starts this um, kind of uh, snail shell shape out from around here, somewhere around past the coil, creating a positive pressure here in this uh, sort of port we've created in the crankcase. When my finger's going through there, that follows all the way through into um, this chamber underneath of here, which then has a, 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 obviously an upward facing port into the cylinder, like I described, round and out the back. The plate covers it so no, no crap can get in there um, when it's operating. Obviously you'll run an outer wares on your pull start, which um, outer wares are designing the, the, pull, the uh, pull start cover for this. They're dragging their feet a little bit. So um, we've been chasing them recently and they, they promised that it'll be just a couple of weeks away. And uh, we'll have our colors, our colored covers um yeah so that that's kind of how the cooling system works you can see that all and how we've machined it it's it's a it was a really fun project to design in terms of the how to get this to all fit in here without looking too bulky but also work to the point where we want it to work and we've got the airflow now so it's just flowing a really really nice amount of air um, to suit the internal ports within the cylinder that were obviously were designed for water we, we do port them out a little bit to increase the flow whereas they they cast in little choke points here for the water to keep the water flow um, at, at the, the rate they want. But we're, we're literally talking of 50 to 60 degrees C that we've dropped the operating temperatures at um, at the plug at high, you know, at full power use, which is doesn't sound a lot. But in terms of the piston life and, and the chance of seizure, that is that is a big, big difference. So that was um, just such a win. Moving on to the other side of the motor. We have gone with a GoPed 78 millimeter clutch. Um, clutches are important and um, that is a really nice size, but I've been working more and more with the GoPed market uh, producing engines, you know, real high power engines for, for their peds. And shout out to um, Marcus, who, who's got an RC Max 80 Supreme uh, package on his ped. He's just broke the world record twice in a row. I think 73 and then 75 miles an hour on his ped. There's a video of him cutting through traffic, overtaking cars like they're going backwards. It's just insane. That guy is crazy, but um, just proved the power that we're making, even with the 80 Supreme, um, let alone this new monster, which is a significantly more powerful beast. Um, this is a 30 horsepower capable cylinder, depending on the setup and the pipe you use. I haven't got a final figure yet because I am still... Uh, tweaking this and the reason I wanted to um, sort of leave the design fluid up until the last second is just to make sure because we have multiple GoPed clutch options this is the lower RPM they call it a five seven hundred although it's not it's more like sort of seven and a half eight thousand the seven thousand RPM clutch as the the CY 460 um, guys sort of brand it is they brand it at 7000 but it's actually over 9000 rpm engagement so we've got two choices out of the box they are fiber clutches which is great they're sort of a sintered fiber they're really good quality actually um the whole piece is like 25 quid so when it's worn out you just throw it away and stick a new one on you know messing around with adjustment or all the hassle of um you know getting it on point because this thing has got such a wide power band it is always in the power the second you touch the throttle uh, and this thing is so lightweight it, it's just 
it spools up beautiful. Throttle response is just fantastic. Um, I feel we've taken on a lot of um, constructive criticism as well as positive feedback about the 110 millimeter clutch. And although it's not discontinued at all, because in the Raminator and the GoPad, the 110 clutch just is just phenomenal. Um, for our big um, flagship RC engine, we've gone down a little bit in size to a much lighter clutch, and but I have gone back to non-adjustable. Maybe it's not everybody's cup of tea, but when you get back to basics, why do you buy one of these big motors? Because you want to go out and play with it and get as much time with the car as possible. And this clutch is going to get you that end goal. Um, you don't have to mess around with adjustment. Four or five tanks down the line. I know I've had feedback from good friends who do use adjustable clutches. Um, and you know they're having to tweak the adjustment on their clutch because the, the springs have gone out of, um, gone out of, you know, maybe they've got too hot or they're having to sort of tweak it. And that, that's annoying because then you're pulling it apart all the time. The only time you have to pull this apart is when you decide that it's worn out and you just throw it in the bin and stick a new one on for 25 quid. I mean, for my taste, that is just the only way to go now. And especially when we've used this on the Raminator 50 GT uh, package. It's awesome. We've used it on uh, a lot of the GoPad testing we've doing. We've got a 50cc GoPad engine coming soon. And this can handle all the load that's created by, you know, a, a 40, 50 kilo ped combined with up to a 125 kilo plus guy that uh, and, and not particularly complain about it. Yes, they don't last forever, but in an RC, which is only sort of 25 to 30 kilos, we're going to get good life out of it. And um, in terms of you know cost per use sort of thing, it's pence. It's just nothing. So that's good. The advantage of going to 78 millimeters, and this is complete luck that on, on my part is because we chose the clutch before I worked out how I was going to fit it in a car. This motor, despite it being now the biggest RC engine on the market, will drop straight into a Baja on a standard Baja chassis with no custom brackets or anything at all. And the reason we, how we've achieved that is there's no crankcase on this side of the engine. It's literally just the exposed bell. So it is pretty damn tight to the back of the Baja uh, obviously the gearbox sits here and, the, and, and all the brakes and everything comes uh, pretty damn close to the bell, but it does not touch. You can use our uh, Billet HD RC Max uh, Baja tranny plate that will drop straight onto this mount, will not touch the bell. No cutting of tranny plates, no custom tranny plates needed. It literally drops straight in a stock Baja. Not, <laughs> not that you'd want to use it in a stock Baja, but um, that would rip that thing to pieces in about three seconds. But from a fitment point of view, it makes it easier for us because we haven't got loads of custom brackets and explain how to fit them. And it's easier for you guys because you can just buy this motor package, drop it straight in your existing rigs that you're running, 40 GTs, 50 GTs, 71 Supremes, and you want to go to the next level. You don't have to have any custom parts at all. Just drop in and go. And on this side, we've managed to miss the fuel tank. If you look at this, hopefully this is going to come across okay. We've made the crankcase quite thin and relatively close tolerance. It's still got more than enough tolerance, but to the bell, and that just misses the um, the rear brace in the fuel tank. It just, and again, this was absolute luck. I now have a Baja completely drawn in CAD, so we were able to save a lot of the trial and error of prototyping for fitment by literally dropping this into CAD, putting the clutch in there and say, right, how do we build a crankcase that fits? And this does. So that's going to make it so much easier for compatibility with every hybrid kit on the market every you know bar out there that's um if you buy a second hand upgraded baja you can just drop this straight in so that's the goal up there and the carrier is obviously sort of uh, inspired by the design of the 62 millimeter um, and 54 millimeter baja carriers i love the design with the, the cooling fins and lightweight sort of three three leg design so i've not changed that why why uh, why change it if it's um if it's not broken so that'll be good. This clutch belt is a one piece steel clutch bell, but the production version of the bell is going to have something on it that I've wanted to do for a couple of years now and just never got around to. It's just time, isn't it? So the bell is going to be a separate piece to the actual gear, uh, the gear fitment um, spigot at the end here. So if at any point, uh, especially with the power of this thing, you do wear out this piece of um, steel at the end there with the gear fits on, because obviously over time it'll work its way loose a little bit you literally just have to buy a small screw in piece and then the bell la lasts forever so you now have a lifetime um sort of component there with the bell because this these these clutches aren't going to wear that steel bell out ever and then you just change your gear piece if you want to which makes it uh, even more user friendly and, and back to those original goals for the project you know, make it easy to maintain easy to use 
I think I've covered everything. Um, obviously, you guys are going to have a million questions. Uh, I was trying to cut it down by answering as many as I could at once, but feel free to ask. Uh, I'm struggling a little bit on time at the minute, hence why this video is two or three weeks later than what it should have been. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. I hope you're as excited as I am. I mean, this has been something that I've kind of been nervously mulling over for, for ages in the back of my head and just never had a chance to make it real. So it's um, it feels pretty good to be sat here talking about it and looking at it and thinking that has turned out exactly how I want it to turn out. The fan cooling is wicked. You know, the, 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 I like the look of it. Hopefully you guys are on the same page as me with the, the way the cylinder looks and the head that matches it. I think it's sweet. It's not a round cylinder, but because that's been done before, but it's just got that beautiful kind of curvature to it. I think it's um, it's really nice. So. Anyway, let me know what you think. Thanks for your time. And um shouldn't be too long now before we get back into production. So, but, but I would appreciate if you guys can bear with me on the timescales. I've been struggling a little bit with uh, the, the condition I've got in my spine and it's been, I've not been able to do the usual 100 hour plus weeks that I do. So I, I'm, I'm playing catch up a little bit, but um, this will come. It won't be rushed. It will be spot on when it's ready. And um, to anybody that's uh, put interest down or, or tried to pre-order one, then I really, really appreciate your support. Thanks, guys.